And I want to highlight some five areas that are important to keep in mind so that if you do, again, go down this route, or if you are in this route, just consider um, these uh, scenarios and think about these um, situations so that you can actually put yourself in the best situation possible so that you can save yourself some heartache. So um, the first thing that I want to talk about in terms of your consideration is you want to understand the difference between multifamily and other types of asset classes. So I alluded to it a little earlier, but when it comes to multifamily, your multifamily is essentially just going to be any property that is multi family or more than one unit. So think of two or more families that are occupying that investment. And to make it simple, think of townhouses, duplexes, apartment buildings. Anything in that area is considered multifamily. And a multifamily can be as little as two units or two apartments, or it can be as high as 50 plus. So depending on the range, it's a very wide range, but ultimately it's going to be considered an investment that has more than one family living in the space. Um, so that's the first thing that you want to be mindful of. And the reason this is important is because if you are looking to um, potentially acquire or go out and get a loan to acquire a multifamily space, the banks will ultimately consider how many units you're looking to acquire or pursue. And that's important because that is going to dictate the type of loan you get. It can either be a residential loan or it can be a commercial loan. And typically, if the bank identifies your investment opportunity as one that is four units or less, chances are that they can qualify you for a residential loan. But if they consider the investment property to be four units or more, now you're transitioning to more of the commercial loan. So th those are going to be the differences. And um, with those differences, it may require you to have certain qualifications. It may require you to have a certain amount of down payment, et cetera. So just be mindful of multifamily and the number of units that will differentiate residential versus commercial. Um, so that's the first one. The second item that should be worth consideration is that multifamily spaces have a huge outlay of cash that is required for you to actually acquire from the so the initial contribution and investment is huge compared to a non-multifamily investment which would be residential or single family ultimately so when you do have a multifamily space um, the upfront costs are very very high and it actually presents a huge barrier to most people um, and for example, if we're just talking about a basic regular multifamily apartment, maybe five units, six units, those are easily going to be in the million dollar plus range. And if we're talking investment property, not your primary residence, chances are um, it's going to be very challenging to come up with that cash upfront on your own for most individuals. So just keep in mind that the initial um, cash that is required is much more greater. And in most cases, the expectation is that whatever that property is valued at, um, you should have at least 20% of the down payment to even um, be considered for um, a loan if that is the route you're going to go. So keep that in mind. That's number two. Number three is uh, you want to have the right team in place. And this is very, very critical. Um, this is what I preach to my clients on, on a regular basis. Um, when you're in this space, um, you have to ask yourself, if I were to acquire a multifamily investment, who is going to help me manage this? Am I going to manage this property myself? Am I going to have my family members assist with this um, management of the property? Or am I going to outsource some of the work to different um, professionals? And this is huge because what happens is if you don't have your identified individuals that will be participating in the upkeep, the management, um, assisting with maybe the investment of the property, um, it's going to be a very, very uh, hard situation for you to manage, and it can be very stressful. So what I mean by that is you want to identify who your key team players are and who your key team players are going to be. Um, you, you need to identify these individuals before you actually enter into um, the investment. So if you're considering, you need to be able to identify who your real estate 
broker will be. You need to identify what your options are with regards to mortgage companies that you could potentially go to. You also want to identify um, potential property management companies. Um, if I'm not going to be managing these properties myself or these units myself, who is going to do that? So there's property management companies that can do that for you. So you want to identify what your options are there. Um, in addition to that, you need to identify who's going to help you keep track of managing um, the accounting of the property, um, who's going to help you keep track of the budgeting of the property. So now you need to identify who is your CPA, who your accounting firm is going to be. And then in addition to that, um, realistically identify what are you going to be doing? If you're going to be hands off, then you absolutely need to identify who these key pe people will be so that when the time comes and you actually acquire the property and secure the property and you now have tenants in place, you're outsourcing um, the work that's required to keep the, the property um, ongoing. So you for sure, for sure, for sure need to identify who your key people will be and then um, it's best to have those people pretty much um, identified before you execute and finalize your transaction and get into the business of being the investor of this multifamily space. So that's the third one. Number four, you want to understand your market. And what I mean by that is every market is going to be different depending on where you're at here in the States. So I'm in L.A., the LA market is a lot different than what it is in Texas. And Texas is a lot different than what it is in New York. So depending on where you're going to be um, investing and acquiring your investment space, you want to be sure that you understand the market. And what I mean by that is you, you need to understand what is the market rents? What are the rates for um, this particular type of investment that I have? What are the markets being charged for the investment across the street or next door or in the city. Um, you need to understand um, those basic things so that you can ultimately have an idea of what you're in a position to charge and what you're able to do with your investment. More importantly, you need to be able to understand these numbers so that you can put together your budget and understand what your cash flow will look like, what your net operating income will look like on that investment. Um, so that's the fourth one. And then number five, this is the last one right here. You want to understand the laws. Um, every city, every state have specific requirements with regards to what a investor can do with the tenant properties or with the tenants. And what I mean by that is um, certain states and certain cities have uh, limits and restrictions on how much you can raise their rents. They have limits and restrictions on how you can make modifications and improvements to the property. So you need to understand what these requirements and laws are um, before you actually proceed with um, making changes to an existing agreement or um, making changes to the existing structure of a building. And if you don't know this yourself, this is certainly where the help of a professional like a legal team or a lawyer or a property manager can come in and assist you with making sure that you're following proper guidance. Otherwise, you can put yourself in a lot of trouble and it could re result in penalties, fines, et cetera, which are things that you obviously don't want to deal with as a um, investor. So those are the five areas that I think are huge, huge considerations if you are a multifamily investor and or considering um, getting into the space. So